common appendix carry mistake number one, and that is giving up too easily. Initially, I had this appendix carry mistake slotted for number six, but I realized that this really is the number one mistake and that is giving up too easily because sometimes it is just easier to give up or to even just take a break. Some body types and gun combinations have a much bigger challenge when it comes to appendix carry, but that doesn't mean that the juice isn't worth the squeeze. The vast majority of body types can carry appendix, but that doesn't mean that it's for everyone. Before giving up, make sure that you know all the tricks so that you didn't give up on something prematurely or you didn't give up on something that could have actually worked really well for you with some adjustment. Common appendix carry mistake number two, and that is you've chosen a belt that's too stiff. There's this misconception that in order to carry a gun, you have to use the stiffest belt known to man. And this is a mistake, particularly for appendix carry, for a couple of different reasons. If your belt is too stiff, then it'll create gapping where there otherwise would have been a holster wing interacting with the belt. So if the belt is too stiff going around your body, it'll create a hula hoop effect which will inhibit the amount of grip rotation you get and negatively affect your concealment. It will also cause a hot spot where the gun tips away from you and the muzzle pokes into you. Instead, for appendix carry, you wanna find a belt that is stiff going up and down, but flexible as it goes around your body. Common appendix carry mistake number three, and that is not using the right concealment features or not really using any at all. But first we need to establish what are concealment features. Concealment features are things like wings and wedges. And we use these in conjunction with pressure in order to bring certain parts of the gun in closer to our body. When we use the wrong concealment features for our body, we wind up just adding bulk in the wrong areas without reducing printing. A wing attaches to the grip side of your holster, and there are different kinds of wings with different features, but generally a wing is going to interact with the pressure from your belt in order to bring the grip of your gun in closer to your body. Some wings have an angle to them. This can help tuck both the grip and the top of the gun in closer. Then other wings have different size inserts and shapes like the mod wing. The mod wing should always come with a small insert and a large insert. The larger insert will typically give you more grip tuck than the small. A wedge comes in all different shapes and sizes and materials and can be beneficial in a number of different ways. Generally, a wedge is made of a foam-like material and is placed on the lower end of your holster down by the muzzle between your body and the holster. Not only can a wedge aid in concealment by bringing the top of the gun in closer to your body and depending on where you place it, the grip of your gun or the slide side of your gun in closer to your body, but it can also help to eliminate things like painful hot spots created by the muzzle end of the holster interacting with your body. There are other ways to achieve concealment, like putting the entire gun inside of a corset style pocket, but most of these other methods unnecessarily inhibit access and draw speed. You can determine which concealment features that you need by using things like the poke and check method, which we'll have linked up here and down in the description. Common appendix carry mistake number four, and that is placing your gun too low on your body or just generally in the wrong place. Concealment inevitably takes customization because all of our bodies have their own natural peaks and valleys, but generally you want to get your gun to nestle into a valley and keep it off of the peaks. We actually have a fairly comprehensive video that already exists on this exact topic and in that video you'll see a variety of different body types going through the process of finding their concealment sweet spot. I'll link that video above and also down in the description so if this is something you're struggling with definitely go check out the full video on that topic. Sometimes we mistakenly place our gun too low which can cause the gun to interact with our gut which also causes the grip of the gun or the top of the slide to tip away from the body and create painful hot spots. Additionally, placing the gun where the body hinges means that every time you go to sit, the gun is gonna poke you. Typically, you can solve these problems by placing the gun up slightly higher in your torso, which may require you to try some higher rise pants and or by adding a wedge to the muzzle end of the holster. We also have a lot of existing resources on how to use a wedge. So I'm gonna link that down in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about wedges, make sure to check out that resource. Everyone's natural peaks and valleys are going to be a little bit different. So in order to get the best concealment results, make sure to kind of play around with your placement between 10 and two to see where your body conceals best. Appendix carry mistake number five, and that is carrying a short barreled gun without a longer holster. To caveat this appendix carry mistake, 
most people carrying with a shorter barreled gun are going to benefit from the keel principle, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the solution for everyone out there. If you're carrying something like the Glock 43X or the Glock 26 in a flush fitting holster, then you're going to probably find that the top of the gun is going to want to tip away from your body. And the problem with that is that it's going to cause two main issues. One being that it's probably going to cause the grip of your gun and the top of the slide to poke out and want to print. And in addition to that, it's probably going to cause the actual muzzle of the gun or the holster to interact with your body in a more pointed way that's going to cause a painful hotspot. These issues can typically easily be solved by just using a longer holster with that same gun. And this is what John Houtman calls the keel principle. Much like a keel on a boat, if there's not enough gun below the belt line, there's nothing to stop the grip from tipping away from the body. This can be especially true if the user has any kind of gut at all, because the gun is already wanting to kind of naturally tip away from the body. And so this kind of body type can really, really benefit from using that longer holster. Common appendix carry mistake number six, which is the final mistake within this series, and that is carrying too much gun for your concealment sweet spot. Carrying a gun that is larger than your available concealment space is going to present challenges for you, things like the grip actually running off of your body because it's exceeding that space, as well as rear sight printing, optic printing, and grip printing. My husband and I came up with this idea when we realized that his Glock 34 that he was carrying looked proportionally smaller on him than my Glock 48 did on me. And when we did the math, we actually realized that we were correct. Proportionally, a Glock 34 was actually smaller on his body than the Glock 48 is on mine. The dimension we found that makes the biggest difference in ease of concealment is the ratio between the height of your gun from the bottom of the magazine to the top of the slide or optic and the distance across the front of your body between your two hip bones. If your gun takes up too much space, it will start to run off your body and require very aggressive concealment mechanics and clothing choices to conceal it well. You can actually make this calculation for yourself by measuring the height of your gun as well as your hip to hip distance and dividing your hip to hip measurement into your gun height measurement. This should tell you what percentage of space your gun is occupying between your hips. Based off of this information and early informational polling in the Filster Concealment Workshop on Facebook, Filster recommends that you select a gun between 30 to 40% of your hip to hip distance to ensure that your gun will fit within your concealment sweet spot. So say you've chosen a gun that exceeds your concealment sweet spot, it's greater than 40% of your hip to hip distance. How can we now take that gun and produce acceptable concealment results? The answer is everything. You're going to have to really invest some time and effort into really dialing in your concealment setup, as well as learning about concealment mechanics and the best way to apply them to your body. To dive into concealment mechanics more in depth, we would recommend viewing our concealment mechanics playlist here on YouTube, as well as going to the basics of concealment mechanics on our website, where you're gonna be able to really start sifting through all of that information and start applying it to your body and your concealment setup. Thanks for watching this series. If it was helpful for you, please comment down below and let us know which tip made all the difference for you. And if you still have questions, please comment down below and let us know what those are so that we can continue making relevant content to help solve your concealment challenges.